Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the shear stress variation in thin walled section. Okay, so uh, in the previous lecture, we already discussed uh, we already discussed about how the shear stress is varying across the cross section. Okay, we had a detailed analysis. We have a detailed discussion on built-up sections. Now, in this lecture, we'll see how the shear stresses are varying across the thin sections. Means uh, at what at the how is the variation? Basically, whether it is a parabolic variation, whether it is a linear variation along the different segment of the section. Okay, so we'll come directly to the topic over here. Now, basically, uh, shear stress in thin wall section means uh, to know better to understand. Uh, first, we want to know that what is what what is thin wall section. Okay, thin wall section are those section in which the thickness of the member in which the thickness of the member is greater than in which thickness of the member is less than the depth. Of the member depth or width of the section. Okay, so in this uh, lecture, we'll this will um, our our thin wall section will be will be an I section. Okay, we'll see the distribution of the shear stress along the I section. Right. So uh, the thin wall sections, the thin wall sections uh, will behave will be uh, why uh, in engineering. The thin wall sections are used where we have uh, uh, the advantage. Basically, uh, the advantage of using the thin wall section is that its strength with uh, uh, strength or in with respect to the bending upon the weight ratio is very very high, right? Uh, means I can say that uh, what I want to say is that uh, means you need less material to resist the bending to resist bending. Okay, or if if you want if you are if you are using the thin wall section, okay, so. Uh, or you can say that the thin wall section will behave better in bending. Okay, so uh, so in, in in what I want to tell is that let us suppose I uh, let us suppose I have an I section over here. So this is this is uh, this is an I section. Okay, now in this section. We need to find what will be the what will be our shear stress distribution. Okay, so in the previous lecture we already discussed how the vertical shear stress is distributed along this cross section. Okay, the vertical shear stress is distributed along as parabolic parabolic distribution. Some uh, some vertical some shear stress will be taken care by the flange and major major vertical shear will be taken care of by the bed. This thing we have already discussed. Okay, now in this lecture uh, let us see. Uh, how the shear stress is varying along the cross section? Okay, we have already discussed. Let us suppose this is an example of the a cantilever beam. Okay, where W load is acting on this beam. Okay, so I am taking an segment dx over here. Okay, this is the total length dx. Okay, now I am cutting one section over here. I am cutting this section at this point. Right. Okay. I cut the section. This is. Let us suppose this this portion is A B C D. Okay. So and this this is E F. Okay. So if I cut the section or cut the section over here and. And also, you can see that, uh, and you can see that. Uh, let us suppose. Let us let us draw this thing. Okay, it will look like this. Right. This is nothing but this is this is your D C uh, D C A B and this is E. This is F. Okay. So uh, when this uh, when this when this in in this when D X portion, let us suppose we have there is a moment M and here is a moment M plus D M. Okay. Due to this variation in moment, there will be some there will be some uh, stresses. There will be some uh, stresses will be there. Okay. At this phase of a member, uh, let us suppose the bending stresses, the bending stresses uh, will be acting, uh, will be acting like this in this member. Okay, and uh, 
at this member there will be some bending stresses okay now now to balance these stresses now to balance these stresses let us suppose this is this bending stress is due to m plus ba moment okay and this is due to m moment right now as you can see that the bending stresses will be more due to this moment and the bending stresses will be less due to this 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 moment so so obviously uh, i can say that this this stresses will be more than these stresses so to balance this thing to balance this uh, this force and balance force i'll have some let let us suppose the net effect of these stresses will be uh, some f1 force okay net effect of this will be acting on this surface acting on this cross section will be let us suppose this is f2 so f1 will be greater than f2 over here right so uh, to balance to balance this unbalanced force i'll have we, i need to have some some forces and will act some forces which which will act in this direction okay and let us suppose this force will be uh, this force is f3 so our equation will become like this f1 is equal to for the equilibrium f3 plus of f2 okay so is f is this f3 is nothing but it is basically generated due to the shear stress between this portion and this portion okay now if i consider uh, now if i consider if i consider uh, one if i now if i consider the one element over here let us suppose i am considering an, an element over here okay so uh, okay so i'm taking an element i am taking this element cutting out from here okay so at this element there will be some due to this uh, due to this uh, due, to, uh, due uh, there will be some f3 force to net force the shear stress or you can say that the shear stress uh, let us suppose this there will be some tau shear stress okay so so tau will be acting it along this along this at, at this section like this okay and to, to at the complementary of which will be acting like this again this will be tau right so you can say that you can say that there you can see that q the tau is acting at this portion this tau and the complementary of which will be acting along this this direction right now in the previous lecture we have studied about there will be some vertical shear stress also okay but in the thin wall section we are we are uh, neglecting this uh, we are neglecting that component why because why because actual in actual scenario there will be some in actual scenario there will be some uh, there will be some vertical shear stress okay this will be tau dash let us suppose this will be tau dash okay as per assumption made in the thin, thin wall sections tau dash will be equals to zero okay why because as you can see that the top of the member at the top of the member you can say that tau at the top of the member you can say that tau double dash will be zero shear stress will be zero at this bottom also tau double dash will be zero okay this shear stress this shear stress component will be zero at the top portion okay and the thickness of this member and the thickness of this member is very very less thickness of this member is very very less so i can assume that the vertical shear vertical shear component will be zero will be zero uh, along will be the, will be zero in this segment okay so so uh, if i consider the element over here then in, in that element in that element in that element i'll have only in that element in that element i'll have only the the this this component of the shear stress okay this tau this horizontal component will be there only okay so uh, now now you can see that now uh, now uh, what 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 is the shear flow shear flow is nothing but tau into the width of the cross section what will be the what is the width of the cross section is over here this is nothing but t so our q q is equals to tau into what t okay so if uh, one q is acting over here this q so again there will be some q over here okay complementary of it this is the this is this uh, variation of this in this segment uh, which we have to find over here how this q is varying along this segment okay now uh, one thing is clear we have assumed that the vertical shear stress distribution is in this plane we have neglected why because 
shear stresses at, at this top portion and this bottom portion will be zero. Okay, so we are and the thickness is very very small. So we are neglecting the, we are neglecting that uh, we are neglecting that variation. Okay, and also in the previous section while calculating the vertical shear shear stress distribution, we we made a cut like this. We made a cut like this. Okay, but in case of in, if, if if you want to find the shear flow along the flanges along the along the flanges shear flow along the flanges, we need to make a perpendicular cut over here. Okay, that means it's important. How you choose a cut, that uh, thing will uh, determine that which shear stress you are uh, finding. Okay, so this is the thing over here. This is the thing I want to discuss now. Now we'll uh, now we'll see how this shear stress is varying across this flange. This flange, how this Q is varying across this flange. Okay, so. So let us let us suppose I have an I have an I section. Okay. Whose so thickness is T, right? And the distance this is D by two. Okay. And uh, this is the width of the section, right? Now we now we need to find now we need to find what will be the variation of the shear flow along this along this cross section along this uh, this along this flange along this flange what will be the cross section what will be the cross section along this flange okay so for that what I am doing is that this is my axis of symmetry okay what I am doing is that this is this complete is total width okay at a distance of x at a distance x at a distance of x, I'm taking, I'm cutting one, uh, one taking one element. This is what nothing but dx element. Okay. This is uh, this is dx element, and now uh, I need to find the shear stress. Uh, I need to find the shear stress. What what will be the shear flow for this? Uh, what will be the shear flow? Uh, what will be the shear uh, total? What will be the shear stress for this uh, for this element dx? Okay. So as we can see that, as we have already known that tau is nothing but tau is equals to v into v into a into y bar over me i into d. Okay, d here is nothing but thickness t, right? So now I have taken the member element dx over here. Now it's upon me which uh, now it's upon us which uh, a first moment of area we need to consider. Either I can take this moment of area. Or this moment of area. Okay, so I am taking this moment of area. The area which I need, which I'll be considering first moment of area will be this area. Okay, so this width is nothing but b by two. Okay, so uh, what will be the a by bar? A by bar in this case, a by bar is nothing but uh, is nothing but a by bar will be a a will be. Uh, this is this is our cut over here. A will be nothing but b by two minus of x minus of x into t. This is a, and y bar is the centroid of this portion from the neutral axis. Neutral axis will be nothing is nothing but d by two. So it will be into d by two. So this is our a y bar. Okay. Now, now you can see that. Uh, Tau, if I put this value in the formula, tau equals to v is a v is a shear force into uh, b over my two into x into t into d upon my two over my i into t. This is the shear stress which we are getting over here. Okay. And if I multiply this thing, tau into t is equal to v into b by two into x into t into d over me 2 okay so this is nothing but this is the shear flow this is the shear flow for this for this element okay this is the shear flow for this element uh, this is the shear flow we already discussed how what is what is what is shear flow okay so this is the shear flow so q is nothing but uh, v into b by 2 x into t into d over me 2 okay now if i if i look into this formula q so at 
at x equals to at x, x equals to zero, what will be our q? Q will be if I put x x equal to zero over here, q will be equals to v into b into t d by four. Okay, this is the expression for q shear flow at this point. At this point, okay. Now, when the q when x equals to b by two, our shear flow will will, will be equals to zero. Because if I want to find the shear flow, the shear flow at this process, at this portion, there will there is no there is no uh, area beyond beyond it. Okay, so first moment of area will be zero. So that's why q will be q is is equals to zero. Or or you can say that, or you can also ask ask that if let us suppose if I am not taking this area, I am want to take this area. Okay, either you can take this area or either take you can take. This area, okay, depends upon you. So if I, if you want, if if you if you still uh, want to know, if I'm taking this complete area for finding the for finding Q over here, the centroid of which will be acting at this location only, right? So uh, so so the uh, so uh, the centroid will be acting at this uh, the first the the if let us what I want to tell is that if if I have this I section, okay. Now it's it's now it's let us suppose I want to find the uh, the shear stress at this point. It's our choice whether I want to take this area, okay, or this area, okay. It depends. It depends which will be more convenient for you. If you if you if you will take this area, then the uh, then the more first moment of area will be difficult to find. Then uh, to to make that thing simple, we'll take this area only, okay. Now if I want to find if I want to find the shear stress at this location, then either I have to take this area or either I have to take this complete area. But at this set, uh, beyond this section, there is no area, so that's why Q will be zero. Or if you take this complete area over here, the centroid of this area will be at the neutral axis only. So first moment of area will be zero. So from that also you can say that Q will be zero. Okay. So uh, so uh, what you can say is that the shear stress will be varying linearly. Why linearly? Because there is only there is no x square term or x cubic term. There is only there is uh, there is uh, there is only the term, there is a only x term which which uh, there is only a there by this formula you can see that the variation is linear. Okay, it is something like equal to y equal to m x plus c. Okay, this variation will be uh, linear. Okay, so so we have already decided that this variation will be linear. Now uh, now what we'll do. Uh, this is the I, I section, okay, and this is the variation of the shear the shear flow. So at this point, our shear flow will be zero, okay. So the shear flow, the the, the magnitude will be very like this. At this portion, it is it is it will be very less, then little bit increase, then. Then it will be increasing along this flange. Okay, so at this portion it will be maximum. So by symmetry, by symmetry also we can say that at this location the our flow will be our flow will look like this. Okay, it is very very important to decide how this shear flow direction is uh, uh, how this shear flow direction is coming. Okay, this thing we have already discussed. Okay, now these two these things this thing uh, the shear flow uh, the shear flow at this they will both combine. And for the vertical, it will move like this. So this is, let us suppose, this is Q max at neutral axis. Okay, then less, then little bit less, less, less of two here. Then again, it will be zero. So as you can see that, as you can see that, uh, the there will why it is calling the shear flow. Why why we are calling it the shear flow because we are showing the shear flow through the flow vectors, or you can say that it is flowing like through like a liquid. Okay, the water is let us suppose the water is coming from this side, this side, and it will be it will be the discharge is adding at this point, and again it will be moving in outward direction. First it is coming inward, then it is going it is coming along this this section, then it is going outward. So it is basically like a flow vectors. So that's why we are calling it as a shear flow. Okay. So, so now, now, uh, now, if I want to calculate, if I if I want to calculate, what will be the? This is this is the variation we uh, we have decided we have calculated. 
Now, uh, the net effect, now the net effect, if I let us suppose if this is the I section, this is the I section. Okay, so net effect of this shear flow will be will be a force in this direction. Okay, which is will denote by F1. And due to this, this shear flow, there will be some force which is symmetrical, will be F1. Similarly, there will be some force, the net effect of this force will be F2. And here also it will be F2. So what will be our F1? So F1, if we want to find the F1, so let us suppose Bf1 is nothing but Q into dx. Okay. If I integrate this thing from 0 to from 0 to b by 2, I'll get the total f1 value. Okay. So what is uh, what is the variation over here? What will the what is the variation over here? B into b by 2 x into t into b over by 2 into dx, which is which is equals to dl. So by integrating 0 to b by 2 over here, if we integrate this thing. If we integrate this thing, uh, if we integrate this thing over here, so it will be b into t into d over by 2 into b by 2 x. So it will become b by 2 x minus of x square over by 2. Okay. And 0 limits are 0 to b by 2. Okay. So b into t into d over by 2, this is nothing but b square over by 4. This is b square over by 8. So it will be. So b square over me 8. So b by 2, 0 to b or 0 to b by 2 is our limit. So the value is coming out to be total shear force is coming out to be b into p d over me 2 into this is nothing but b square uh, upon me 4, b square upon over me 8. Okay. So it will be b into t into d b square over me 16. 16 i okay we forgot to keep i over here so this is the uh, so this is the uh, this is the maximum maximum this is the force net net force which which is the, the value of which is d into t into d d square over my 16 16 i okay so by the symmetry same will be this force okay now uh, now we have discussed key how the she shear flow is varying along the flanges okay now the now the next thing now the next thing is now the next thing is what will be the shear how the shear flow is varying across the across this web of the section okay so you can see that the variation will be linear over here variation is linear over here okay this variation is linear right now we see what uh, how the shear force is varying across varying across the Set along the web of the section. Okay, uh, guys, we have already discussed the shear stress variation in the flange. Okay, in case of involved section. Okay, now we will discuss how the shear stress is varying in case of in, in the web, web portion. Okay, so this is the this is the total width B. This from this center of the flange to so this is distance is total width D. This is our neutral axis, or you can say centroidal axis. Okay, and this the thickness is T. T is very very less than B. Okay, or T less than B. Okay, so now, now we will find, now we, now we need to find what will be the shear stress distribution across the shear flow distribution across the web. So what I am doing over here, I am making a cut at this location. Okay, I am making a cut over at this location and taking an element dy over here at a distance y, at a distance of y. Okay, so now, as you can know that our formula for calculating the shear stress is nothing but tau equals to b into a by bar over my i into b. So tau into b is v into a by bar over my i. So this is nothing but this is the shear flow which we want to calculate at this location. Okay. Now, to calculate the shear flow, uh, either I can take this moment of area or this moment of area. Okay. So I am taking the moment of area. For this, for this, for this portion only. Okay, because I need to calculate the a by bar. V and I, I can calculate a by bar. Is a by bar? I am calculating here. Uh, I have taken the cut at this location. Okay, 
So the main important thing is how to calculate the AY bar. Okay, AY bar is nothing but the first moment of AY bar. Okay, so for this portion, this is let us suppose this is portion number one up to this, and this is portion number two. For portion number one, what what is the area B into D, B into T? Okay, B into T, and what what is the centroid from the from the neutral axis? It will be D by two plus. Now, what will be the uh, centroid of this portion from the neutral axis? It I can write it as this is this I can write is y plus y plus d by two minus of y into my half. I can write okay. This is y y plus uh, uh, half of so centroid of this portion will be. Will be at the center. Will be at the center. And this, what is what will the distance? It will be d by two minus of y. There will be some component of t will be there, but I am neglecting that portion. I am neglecting that. I am neglecting that thing. Okay. So, uh, so uh, whether, uh, so uh, it will be like it will look like this, and and the area area will be area will be uh, area of this portion will be is nothing but d by two minus of y d by two minus of y into me t. Okay, this will be our area. This is this is the y bar of this portion. And this is area. Okay, so if I solve this thing, if I solve this thing, a y bar, this is nothing but b into t into b by two plus uh, uh, b into t by two. This is if I solve this thing, it will be y hmm, y. Uh, y into d by two minus of y, okay, plus uh, one by two into d by two minus of y का whole square, right? And in multiplication, it is outside it will be t. So again, it is b into t into d by two plus. If we expand this formula, so it will be y into d by two minus of y square plus This will be half d square over by four plus y square. Then again, it will be minus of uh, d y. Okay, so uh, it will be nothing but b into t into d by two plus t y d by two minus of y square plus uh, d square over by eight plus y square over by two y square over by two minus of uh, uh, minus of d y over by two. So d by this thing will cancel out, okay? So the term will become p bracket. Uh, this will be d square over me eight plus uh, y square over me two minus of y square over me two. So again, uh, if I take two common from two, if I take two common from here, so b into t into d by two plus t uh, divided by two t square over me four minus of y square. So this is nothing but our a y bar. Okay. So uh, a y bar we have calculated over here. Calculated over here. Calculated calculated over here. Now, now we'll see. Now we'll put the value in this formula and see uh, and we'll calculate uh, what will be the shear shear flow or what will be the shear stress distribution. Okay. So uh, so so v into v uh, into Our formula will is nothing but uh, b into t b d by two b d by two. Or you can say that this is t by two. We can take common outside b d plus uh, d square over by four minus of y square. Okay, over by into i. So uh, this is the uh, so this is the value uh, we have taken we have calculated over here. This is nothing but the shear flow, shear flow. Okay. So uh, this is the expression of the shear flow. Now you can see that the variation is parabolic over here. Okay. Due to this, the variation is parabolic. Due to this, the variation is parabolic. Okay. So uh, so you can say that uh, uh, it is like this. Uh, y equals to x square plus c. Okay. So where Q is equal to y, so the variation is parabolic along the along the web web, web portion. Okay. So uh, Q max will be Q max uh, Q max. Uh, 
One thing I want, uh, I would like to tell is that at this portion we have calculated the shear stress. Okay, so uh, this shear stress, I'm uh, I'm uh, cutting, making the cut section over here. Okay, I'm making the cut section over here. This uh, this thing. Uh, so the shear stress will be acting uh, acting at uh, like this. Okay, and the complementary of which will be acting like this. Okay, so I'm calculating this this portion this portion. Okay. So uh, Q is nothing but uh, Q is uh, we have calculated for at neutral axis at neutral axis our Q will be V into T over my two I at neutral axis Y will be zero so V into D plus D square over my four so Q at neutral axis will be Q at neutral axis will be V into T V into T uh, if I take uh, D common D outside it will be V plus D by four over my two e. Okay, or simplify you can they do that is V T into D over my four i or is two B plus D by D by uh, this is if I take two common from here this is D by two. Okay, so. Uh, this is the uh, this is the value of Q max which we have calculated at the neutral axis. Now, if I cal if I want to calculate what will be the two so uh, our variation will look like this at neutral axis it will be same. Okay, and if I want to calculate B at the what will be the value of what will be the value at uh, at D at D by two so uh, Q at Q at this portion at this D by two will be equals is nothing but V into T over my 2i into BD this thing will cancel out plus D square over my 4 minus of D square over my 4 okay so this thing will uh, cancel out so V into T BD over my 2i so it will be at this portion V into T BD over my 2i okay so at this neutral axis, the value is V into T D over my 2 I into 2 uh, into B plus uh, 4, B 4 plus D by 4, D by 2, right? So uh, this is the, this is, uh, this is, this is the thing uh, I want to calculate, I want to teach you, means uh, how the variation is, uh, how the variation will be, will be uh, is there in this cross section, okay? So uh, let us now uh, consider uh, the, the the shear flow. The shear flow at this point, the Q value will be will look like this. Okay. So uh, if we if we look into this figure, the value the variation is look like this. It is increasing in neutral axis. Okay. Then again, it will decrease. Okay, so at the neutral axis, the variation of the shear flow will be maximum, right? So now, uh, now uh, we will calculate what will be the effective force, effective uh, force, uh, effective force F acting along this bell. Okay, what I want to uh, tell is that there will be what will be the net effective force, net effective force, this F effective force which is coming from this shear flow. Okay, we we just need to integrate integrate the integrate our expression over here. So Q, so Q uh, BF will be BF is nothing but Q into dy, and we'll integrate from minus dy two to plus dy two because we need to find the complete uh, complete shear. What will be the magnitude of total force along this well? So it will be from minus dy two to plus dy two. Okay, this is a thin wall section. Therefore, we are taking the mean dimension, right? So Q, uh, if I take the BF, BF is nothing but V into T over my 2i into bd plus d square over my 4 minus of y square into dy okay so the limits are from minus dy2 to dy2 so if i integrate this thing if i integrate this thing over here so it will be nothing but f there will be this equation b into 2i into so this value will become v dy 
plus d square 4 d square 4 into y minus of y cube by 3 okay so if i uh, put the limit value minus d by 2 to uh, d by 2 so it will be nothing but v into t 2t over by di d in uh, dd into d by 2 plus d square uh, 4 into d by 2 minus of minus of d cube over me uh, over me d cube d 8 uh, 24 then uh, 8 into 24 then we'll have a minus b into d into minus of d by 2 okay then minus of d cube by again 8 right and then uh, then what term we are having minus then it will be plus plus d cube by 24 okay so uh, if I uh, if I calculate this thing again v t over my 2 ei it will be b d square over my 2 plus d cube over my 8 minus of d cube over my 24 minus b plus uh, b d square over my 2 uh, this is plus d cube over my 8 and this is again minus d cube over my 24 right so uh, if I calculate this thing if I calculate this thing, it will be uh, v d square. This this is this term will be will become this term will become v uh, t over my two i. Uh, this v d square v d square is, is, is nothing but v d square v d square by two plus v d square by two is v d square plus d cube uh, d cube d cube by four minus of d cube by twelve, right? So this is the expression which we are calculating for uh, shear flow. Okay, this is like me. This is the total. This is the total force which we are getting. If I again uh, solve this formula, this is b into two t over my i. This is b. This is b d square. And if I solve this thing, this will become twelve. Or uh, LCM of this. This is twelve and uh, four three. This is d cube over my into so it will be six. So it will become d cube by six. Okay. So again, if I'll take uh, b t d square d square common outside, so it will become two i into my b plus d by six. Okay. And if I take again two common two outside b t uh, b t uh, uh, b t d square over my four into my two b plus d by three. Okay, so this is a total force which we are getting. This is a total force. This is the value of total force. Total force F is what? Nothing but this F is what? V into T T square over 4 into 2B plus D by 3. Okay, so this is the total force which we are getting over here, and this value is I. I value is also there. I will, I will, I will be there. Okay, so now. Now, if, if I put the value of i, now if I put the value of i in this expression, now if I put the value of i in this expression, let's see what we will get over here. Okay, so uh, what will be the over i? I will be, this is our thin wall section. And Thin wall section, okay, and this is B over here, and this is neutral axis, right? So, uh, first expression I can write over here is that uh, moment of inertia will be uh, nothing but D by two whole Q uh, into into T divided by twelve of this portion. Here I am taking the mean dimension, and due to these flanges, it will be plus two into B into two into B into T into d by 2 whole square okay the moment of inertia of this line is about about, about their axis will be uh, will be negligible okay so it will be nothing but d cube it will be nothing but d cube uh, d cube uh, into 8 into t plus 2b t into 
डी स्क्वायर को और में और ओके दिस इज अवर दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ आई सो इफ आई टेक व्हाट आई कैन टेक ओवर कॉमन फ्रॉम हियर इफ आई टेक डी स्क्वायर टी और कॉमन आउटसाइड इट विल बी डी डी अपॉन में ट्वेल्व इंटू एट ट्वेल्व इंटू एट ट्वेल्व इंटू एट प्लस टू बी ओवर में फोर ओके सो इफ आई टेक दिस थिंग आउटसाइड दिस इफ आई टेक फोर कॉमन फ्रॉम दिस 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 थिंग इट विल बी डी स्क्वायर ओवर में फोर डी स्क्वायर ओवर में फोर दिस इज डी अपॉन में ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस टू बी ओके एंड ट This so f is nothing but equals to b. Okay, so uh, this is this result we should get because the net shear force will be uh, will be will be taken care of by the web only, and it will be equals to f equals to b. Okay, so this is the variation of the shear flow along the web along the web of this section. Okay, the vertical shear vertical shear force will be taken care by the vertical shear flow only. Okay, now for the as you can see that uh, from if I uh, analyze this lecture complete total uh, if i if i discuss the things which we have learned in this lecture i'll cover some few points over here okay this is let us this is our section this was our section this is uh, i section and this is the shear flow Okay, so this is our shear flow. Okay, the uh, you can see that as you can see that there will be the net, there will be the net vertical force will be there. Net will net vertical force will be there. Uh, uh, net vertical force F will be there. F which is equals to B. Okay, this is this vertical force shear force which is equals to B. And this horizontal component due to this there will be some force F1 due to here due to symmetry this force similarly will become same to F F F1. Here we will we'll have some F two and here we will have some F two. Now you can see that this horizontal force should cancel out each other for the equilibrium of this portion. This horizontal force should cancel out each other. So net horizontal force, net horizontal force, net horizontal force will be will be equals to zero. So you can also see that from here F two. This this forces will cancel out each other and there will be a net force remaining which will be equal to the shear force. Okay. So uh, so uh, also there are few points which I would like to discuss over here. The variation of the shear force. The variation of the shear force. The variation of the shear force. Uh, the variation of the shear force for the for the section for the section which are perpendicular to the for the the variation of the shear stress shear flow for the portion which are perpendicular to the which are perpendicular to the shear force. What I want to tell is that here you can see that the direction of the shear force, the direction of the shear force which is acting on the cross section is F. Or B, okay. All those portion, all those portion which are perpendicular to this force, all those portion which are perpendicular to this force, there will be, there will be uh, what? There will be linear variation. So at this portion, at this portion, the variation will be linear, okay. This portion, this flange, this portion is perpendicular to this force, okay. This force is, this portion is perpendicular to this force. This this portion is like this, and the force is acting acting like this. So both are perpendicular to each other. So that's why this at, at this location, at this portion, the, the variation will be linear. Same which, which which we derived earlier. Okay. For this portion, where the portion is along the along the shear force, the variation will be parabolic. Okay. 
Same thing if I if I have this channel section over here. Okay, and it is the axis of this is the axis of symmetry, and there will be some uh, vertical ports V net shear forces acting along this cross section. Okay, now now to uh, at this location at this portion these portion are parallel to these forces, so there will be uh, parabolic variation, parabolic variation. Okay, and here the this 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 portion is perpendicular to this force, so there will, the variation will be linear, right? And how the shear flow will take place? Shear flow will take place look like this. There will be net force which will be acting in vertical direction. As you can see that the horizontal portion will cancel out each other, and there will be a net force which will be acting, which will be acting along the, uh, which will be acting net force will be acting in the vertical direction, which is which will be equal to n. Okay. Similarly, if I take the circular cross section over here, circular, or you can say that some triangular cross section. Okay. So in this in this in this case also the net horizontal force should be zero. So our shear flow or net horizontal force should be zero. So the shear flow will look like this. You can see that if the vertical stress there is one vertical force F is coming. So net effect of this shear flow will be a vertical force in F direction and the horizontal force will cancel out each other. Okay. Here also the horizontal force are cancelling each out cancelling. Each other, okay. So there will be net force, net force due to shear flow in F direction only, right? So uh, similarly for the circular cross section also, you can draw, you can draw. This is our circular cross section. So net shear flow will again. Okay, and you can see that there will be a net vertical force F. Okay, this horizontal component will cancel out each other, only there will be the vertical component. And also remember one thing: the variation of the shear stress distribution along this width will be constant. Okay, for the thin wall section, this, uh, this distribution is constant. Okay, so this is the thing uh, which I want to tell you regarding the shear flow, how the shear flow are varying the shear stress in thin wall section. Okay, I hope uh, I made my point clear. Okay, if you have any doubt. You can write in the comment section. Okay, guys. So, thank you very much.